1,800 miles below the Earth's surface, where it's a scalding 7,000 degrees, a sea of liquid iron over 1,000 miles deep engulfs the solid inner core of our planet. But how can scientists be sure what's inside the Earth? That's exactly what Gina S. from Danbury, Connecticut wanted to ask the universe when she texted us. How do we know the Earth has an iron core if we've never seen it? Thanks for the question, Gina. It turns out that scientists can often infer things indirectly, even if they can't see them directly. For example, we know that the Earth has a liquid iron outer core and a solid iron inner core because Earth has a big magnetic field and motions in this electrically conducting liquid iron core are what produce the magnetic field. Without a magnetic field, life on Earth's surface would suffer. If it didn't exist, then all these charged particles coming from the sun and from outer space would go zipping through our atmosphere and interact with living cells, causing lots more cancerous mutations. Unlike at the core, the conditions at the Earth's surface freeze iron into a solid so strong we turn to it when we need to construct tall office towers or long bridges. But in distant corners of the galaxy, there are worlds so naturally hot and dense that iron is nothing more than a steamy drizzle. They're out there, mostly overlooked and misunderstood too big to be planets and too small to be stars. They're known as brown dwarfs. These objects are like supersized versions of Jupiter, gas giants except up to 75 times more massive. Brown dwarfs, in a sense, are failed stars. They didn't have enough mass ever to produce sufficiently high temperatures and pressures in their interior to ignite normal hydrogen and burn it for a long time. But these objects are still very hot, and despite their names, not brown. If you were right there, it would be glowing, sort of a cherry orange red. A um, lot of heat coming off, so you would get burned in the vicinity of a brown dwarf. These objects are so hot that brown dwarf clouds aren't made of water vapor, like on Earth, but rather gaseous iron vapor. In the interior of the brown dwarf, where the pressures are sufficiently high, the gaseous iron can condense into a liquid and can actually rain down as liquid droplets of iron. That is really cool. That's right, it rains iron on brown dwarfs. Fortunately, we don't have iron rain here on Earth, but if we were to have it, it wouldn't be very pleasant at all. There'd be these hot blobs of iron hitting your head and your cheeks and your arms and burning them, scalding them, and plus being pretty heavy. You know, if you get hit by a rapidly moving droplet of iron, that wouldn't feel very good. Liquid iron never falls on Earth, but it might be happening right now, all across the universe. Our galaxy is really teeming with brown dwarfs. There's tens of billions of brown dwarfs in our galaxy, almost as many as there are actual stars. But our galaxy is also flooded with smaller worlds, rockier and cooler, more like Earth. One of the most amazing things that happened recently that we found the first planet that could potentially have water on its surface. The planet is in a solar system orbiting a star named Gliese 581, about 20 light years from Earth. The fourth planet out, Gliese 581d, circles so close to its star that one of its years lasts just 66 days. But that's a good thing if we want to find a planet with water on its surface because Gliese 581 is smaller and cooler than our sun. Estimates have revealed Gliese 581d to be 10 times more massive than Earth, with a diameter that is twice as wide. Some scientists think that what makes up that extra mass could be mostly gas, 
That means Gliese 581d could resemble the gas giants of our solar system, like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Lots of gas, very little liquid. But others believe that Gliese 581d is different, more like Earth. When you think 10 times Earth's mass, you can make up by just piling rocky material together. So just make it something that we call a super Earth. It could be a mini Neptune too, the jury is still out, but it's the first one that could be like Earth, just bigger. At 10 times Earth's mass, this exoplanet may turn out to be a water world covered in a very deep ocean. Gliese 581d's tight orbit means its parent star's gravity keeps the same side of the planet facing the star. That means half of the planet never goes dark. So basically, whenever you look up at the moon, you see the same side of the moon. That would happen to a planet that close to a star. The far side of this planet never feels the warmth of sunlight, leaving it potentially covered in ice. If you think about that, there should be extremely strong winds from the hot to the cold side. Wind creates waves, even on Earth, whenever gusts of air push and pull at the water's surface. If Gliese 581d really is a water world, then there's no land to break up the waves. You have waves mile high that keep going and keep going for miles. So if you like surfing, that's definitely where you want to be. There might be a hard surface underneath this super ocean, but it's unlike anything we know on Earth. It's a state of solid water known as Ice 7. Instead of sheep or bumper cars, let's imagine water molecules as individual aluminum cans dumped into a container. At typical Earth temperatures and pressures, they interact and move together as a liquid. When they freeze, water molecules lock together into solid ice. It's a molecular structure of water that scientists refer to as Ice-1. Now, Ice-1, the one that you and me are actually used to, this is just because it doesn't have much energy left to move because it gets so cold. The massive ocean of a water world would be hundreds and hundreds of miles deep. Just like on Earth, the deeper the water, the greater the pressure. If the pressure is great enough, something funny happens to water. It turns solid into a kind of hot ice. If you raise the pressure of a liquid, you can generally turn it into a solid because you're squeezing the atoms and molecules so close together that they feel penned in. They can't move past one another. They can't flow. Higher pressures can create a variety of solid ices with internal structures different from frozen ice, or ice one. The difference between anything like ice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we think it goes to 10, but it could go any further, is actually the pressure. The difference between what we used to, ice one, and the other ices is that on the other ices, there are pressures that actually act on these cans. On a planet this big, the water pressure can reach levels millions of times what we experience anywhere on Earth. That means ice seven could be forming underneath the oceans on Gliese 581d. Diving down there, water, 70% of your body, would actually become ice. So probably not the best option. So for now, right now, technology-wise, we probably have nothing that can go down and explore it. But if we're just looking for liquid water, we don't have to travel outside our own solar system. We have a neighbor that has more water than all the oceans of Earth combined.